Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Guided Trip Fly Fishing Podcast. On this episode, I sit down with Scott Willoughby from Trout Unlimited and discuss an upcoming bill going through the Senate right now called the CORE Act, and it affects Gunnison County and affects our, affects our stream access. Um, and so we sit down and discuss this act and dig a little bit deeper so that we can understand it, and hopefully you guys understand it a little bit more. Don't hesitate to send me an email, theguidedtrip at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram at theguidedtrip. You can find me at cameron.roads on Instagram. Um, but thanks, guys, for listening, and we appreciate the support. Hope you enjoy it. The Guided Trip. The church that I go to is is the river. I go there to wash everything away. I wish you were there <laughs> drinking rum, crying your little eyes out. I'm not one of that. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> this fly that my uncle Jimmy and my grandpa perfected, they found it. They found the materials to tie it in the back of a taxi down in Andros. They just tell you bring gotchas. Don't bring anything else. When I was out there on the water with people, I was. I can feel the energy of other Definitely. people, and I care about it. I think that's one of the most crucial parts of fly fishing that often gets overlooked. You know, we're jet lagged, lack of sleep, we're half drunk, holding on to your nuts with one hand, you're holding on to the boat with the other hand. Shitting and talk on, dude. Man, this is what's going on in the world right now. You know, you're on a boat fishing down a beautiful river. Be deliberate with everything that you do with yeah. fly fishing. Yeah. Well, what do you do on your days off? I'm like, I'm on this boat. I'm rowing people down the river trying to figure out what's fishing. But I love it. I wouldn't change it for anything. I wouldn't trade it, man. It's awesome. All right. Well, uh, we're here with Scott Willoughby today. Um, just want to thank you for short notice making this work and setting everything up and um, being able to do this because uh, it happened pretty fast. Um, but with holidays coming up and everything, it's like, all right, we need to get, get this taken care of. Um, well, happy to be here, Cameron. Thanks for definitely. inviting me. Oh, of course. Um, so you're part of TU. Um, do you want to go into what, do you want to talk about TU at all or, um, yeah, I mean, we kind of your I, position I, there. I, TU what? obviously stands for Trout Unlimited. And I think, um, most anglers, uh, in Colorado and, uh, that, you know, uh, know, yeah. know of Trout Unlimited and, the work we do uh, on behalf of uh, cold water fisheries and habitat throughout the country. Um, I'm the Colorado coordinator for the uh, Sportsman's Conservation Project, SCP arm of TU, and that uh, basically, in a nutshell, is the public lands protection part of TU. Okay. Um, not a habitat restoration piece, but you know we deal with public lands issues uh, nationally. I focus on Colorado, but um, today we're talking about the CORE Act, yep. the Colorado Outdoor Recreation and Economy Act, uh, which is a piece of federal legislation um, that uh, obviously impacts Colorado primarily. For sure. Exclusively. Um, so you used to work for the Denver Post though, right? I did, yeah. I spent uh, a number of years um, on staff for over a decade as an uh, outdoor writer. Uh, transitioning to the what we call the outdoor editor role which was uh made famous most recently by charlie myers yep. who was a i was gonna bring that up local legend um the charlie myers uh, state wildlife area down there and um off what he coined the yep. dream stream yep. between uh, spinney and 11 mile reservoirs um when charlie passed away i inherited that role and uh, spent about six years i think as the uh, outdoor editor covering the hook and bullet very cool. side of things so i we've i've mentioned it on the podcast a couple times but um i grew up with charlie myers um and the first time i ever fished spinny reservoir was with charlie myers oh awesome um and so he's kind of part of my life growing up fishing and got me into it a little bit you know obviously my dad did too but um, yep. charlie was there and kind of that that group of people um so i can't say cool. charlie got me into fishing but he, <laughs> he did get me into the denver post he yeah was, he, he was a hell of a writer he brought me in as uh you know sort of an understudy and yep. um really uh, mentored me and, and helped me out along the very way, passionate so. about the outdoors and he was very committed to what he wanted what he wanted committed eloquent passionate um 
talented. Yeah. You know, the, a whole host of adjectives that we can use to describe Definitely. Charlie. <laughs> he was one of a kind. Um, and we miss him. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so did you used to guide growing up a little bit or, or yeah, well, past, you know, just like, like everybody, I, I live over in Eagle County. Yep. Um, and I think everybody in, uh, their twenties, uh, at some point, uh, that knows how to fly fish, uh, spends five or six years as a, as a fishing guide, um, in, in, uh, Eagle County. Um, you know, um, the Vail Valley is mm -hmm. a, a very popular, uh, tourism destination, uh, year round summer and winter and um you know i spent a number of years guiding for the uh, fly fishing outfitters operation there um uh, the orvis shop basically in in uh avon and uh you know floating the colorado river and yep. floating the eagle river and the roaring fork and um you very know, cool so beautiful I, area yeah right beautiful too. area and i had a lot of great opportunities you know that that really helped me a lot you know um complimented my writing uh, as an outdoors writer and photographer um which also you know expanded my realm around the state gave me you know great yeah. opportunities to visit places like the gunnison yep. you know like the roaring fork like um the arkansas where we are today yeah exactly um so what got you going with trout unlimited you know trout unlimited is sort of a, a natural uh, progression i think for um uh, my career path in terms of you know the public lands issues that I was really focusing on as a journalist um, you know y you come to recognize that you know without access without you know natural resources that we have here in Colorado everything else is pointless uh, it begins and ends there um, so it just you know, came around, like I said, as an evolution and became a, 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 an opportunity presented itself to, to go out and, and do this work and conservation full time. And uh, I couldn't be happier. And you still do. I mean, you still do quite a bit of writing and kind of journalism here and there. I still do. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Freelance. And then, of course, you know, Trout Unlimited has a, a great uh, media outlet as well between yep. Trout Magazine, um, you know, our TU.org. Mm -hmm. um, uh, various, uh, you know, blog posts, website uh, opportunities there too. Very cool. Um, all right, so you mentioned it kind of right off the bat um, why we're here today, why we're sitting down. Um, we're talking about the CORE Act. Um, and so if you want to give us a definition of the CORE Act a little bit, if you have one. If not, I have one here. We can say what it is. Yeah, the, um, I mean, the CORE Act, um, it, uh, you know, it depends on how you want to define yeah. it. It's, uh, I like to joke that it's a, a four-headed uh, beast um, because it, it is four pieces of federal legislation that have been introduced independently uh, through the years, uh, recently combined um, by Senator Michael Bennett and uh, co-sponsored in the House by Senator, or excuse me, Representative Joe Neguse. Um It's basically a public lands bill that covers about 400,000 acres around the state. Um, that stretches from the San Juan Mountains uh, down there in southwest Colorado to the Continental Divide and the White River National Forest um, and includes in Gunnison uh, a couple of big pieces. Um, the Thompson Divide area that sort of spans between, you know, Carbondale and Paonia over there. Paonia. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a, there's a mineral withdrawal that accounts for about half of the acreage in the bill. So a 200,000 acre mineral withdrawal that basically says that, you know, there won't be any more uh, oil and gas development on Thompson Divide uh, in the North Fork Valley there of the Gunnison. Um, another 73,000 acres, and this is not on Thompson Divide, but, you know, in the Core Act, you know, surrounding the San Juan Mountains Wilderness Act and the Continental Divide, uh, which is the most uh, tongue-twisting name. Yeah, right. Continental Divide Recreation Wilderness yeah, it's a little and different. Camp Hill Legacy Act. Um, and uh, that, that includes some wilderness expansions, some new wilderness designations. Total uh, statewide would be about 70,000 to 73,000 acres. And then there's another 80,000 acres that is managed as new recreation and conservation areas. Um, so and that includes... You know areas around the san juan mountains mm -hmm. the, the sheep mountain um area up there there's some you know snowmobiling uh there's some 
you know, it's going to preserve existing. It will preserve areas, existing right? uses. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's one of the, the critical components of this whole thing. Um, you know, none of the stuff, uh, takes anything away from anybody. Yeah. This is, you know, just preserving existing uses, preserving the land for outdoor recreation. And it seems like there's been some misnomers where people are going, oh, we're going to get all this new property and, you know, all this stuff's going to be built into this bill where mainly we're just trying to preserve what we have here and keep it Absolutely. current. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, yeah, there's some new wilderness areas and things designated, but most of it's just kind of making sure we preserve it a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, and the, you know, speaking of which, the last yeah, I mean, the last piece there. Too, no, you're, you're you're absolutely correct. And the last piece is the the Cura Conti Boundary Establishment Act, and you know that's a very interesting piece um, because you know for over 50 years now there hasn't been a formal boundary established. Yeah. So I do want to get into that here in just a sec. Um, if you're okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Just a moment. Um, let's pause on that. But how how did this core act? start you know where did it come from um you know it's been building over the years for sure but you know what was the idea behind all this well uh, you know like i said there's four pieces so yeah. you know it started um in probably four different areas um you know most of the credit goes to uh, michael bennett um uh our our uh, senator from colorado who has you know worked diligently um to protect thompson divide the Thompson Divide issue is um, its own sort of podcast yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that could go on, but it's been uh, you know a fight that's been going on for over a decade over there um, with some improper uh, oil and gas leases that were established and uh, subsequently um, suspended and, and determined. So there's there's multiple areas that came together into one bill um, or one act, yeah. creating this. Exactly, it's not just all of it's going to be one thing. Um, right. I think that's where people get confused too, is a little bit about that where, um, you know, these were all different, di different entities. It sounds like that came together and went, yeah, we all have the same idea. We want this to work this way. Um, yeah. Is that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, you know, the idea to combine them into a four piece act, I think, uh, again, came from, uh, Senator Bennett's office and, um, you know, Joe Goose uh, jumped on board, um, yeah and said you know this is a great idea you know this is an opportunity to preserve these lands um but the i think the bottom line is that they weren't getting traction independently yeah so okay. by by packaging it all into gotcha. a little kind of yeah. a mini bus okay um, that's where i was headed with that yeah. yeah okay um so yeah we can go on to kirikani here this is obviously this is my neck of the woods um, you know, and a lot of people listening to this podcast, even just throughout Colorado too, but Keir County area, um, is part of that, uh, part of the core act. Um, it is. Yeah. Um, you know, and, um, it, Keir County is fascinating. You know, I don't know if I'm dating myself by, you know, calling it a, a, a it, there's like a Hardy Boys mystery in there, or maybe we go with Scooby-Doo. <laughs> um, you know, the, the curious case of Keir County is um, I, I like that <laughs> it's uh you know this never-ending thing you know colorado trout unlimited has uh celebrated its 50th anniversary this year and you know Cura county has been going on for 54 years and when i say it's been going on um basically since its establishment uh the paperwork got lost or something and and they never actually signed uh you know the 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 papers that say this is the formal boundary mm -hmm. and and this all started with the building of blue mesa dam correct correct yeah blue mesa dam Mora uh point, Mora point crystal. crystal yeah yep. the three reservoirs over there the aspinall unit um you know and we could get into the, the yeah the real minutiae of it but essentially um and for for people who don't know i can go into it a little bit but um you know, Blue Mesa Reservoir is part of Kirkana, same with a part of the Gunnison River, um, sir, you know, and down into the Black Canyon a little bit. Um, but Blue Mesa Reservoir is the largest body of water in Colorado. Correct. Uh, and so it, it does mean a lot for outdoor recreation and economy out here. Um, brings a lot of people into Gunnison County to fish, hunt, um, recreate, all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of money coming in yep. to Blue Mesa and that drainage. Um, so this is a big part of this core act is this Kirikane thing. Um, so yeah, the boundaries, you know, after Blue Mesa Dam, um, boundaries were never designated for Kirikane. Boundaries were never designated. And, 
you know, the other piece is that the unit was when it was constructed as as uh, part of the Colorado River Storage Project. Um, you know, by authority of Public Law 485 and you know Section 8, basically, you know, it says that there should be a fish and wildlife mitigation plan. Um, there's also a Fish and Wildlife Coordination Act that under the Fish and Wildlife Service that, you know, in cooperation with state agencies, you evaluate fish and wildlife impacts to water projects, make recommendations for mitigation or enhancement. And in short, Cura County began construction without a fish and wildlife plan. And, and as a result, um, it's just been sort of, you know, wallowing out there for 55 years now going on. Um, so what's it, what's it mean, no designation of the boundaries? Um, they're, well, not, they're not really sure where it starts and ends? or There's, there's that. Um, there's also a weird uh, glitch where it's actually managed under the authority of two federal agencies, both the Bureau of Reclamation and the National Park Service. Um, so who has, you know, uh, uh, seniority or priority uh, management nobody knows um, so uh, what the what the boundary establishment act would do was act, is actually take a national recreation area national recreation area which is, has been designated which typically falls under the jurisdiction of the national park service and put it there permanently so they wouldn't get any pushback from bureau of reclamation when they try to achieve uh, okay. whatever management objectives um, you know it's it's uh, <clears throat> The other side of it is they, they can't really account for the property. Uh, it's about 50,000 acres in size. Um, and some of it is, you know, currently national forest land. Uh, there's some Bureau of Land Management land. Uh, there's, you know, it's just this sort of muddled area. And some of it, it sounds like, too, where they're, you know, with, um, you said national park would take over this or yes um some of it sounds like where they want to take over some of the national forest land as well um and blm is that correct or not we're just kind of put it in different hands yeah put it in different hands and that's that's really an important thing to to highlight you know uh bruce noble the former park service superintendent that was in charge of cura county um you know, as he says, this is not going to make another acre of federal land that isn't already federal land, and it's not asking for taxpayers to fork over any more money for the National Park Service. It's completely budget neutral, and it's already federal acreage. Um, so it's federal yeah. acreage neutral as far as that goes. It's basically just saying, okay, this is, all falls into the jurisdiction of the National Park Service. You know, there's, there's a Forest Service campground up uh, Soap Creek mm -hmm. that – makes a lot more sense to be managed by the National Park Service because you have to go through the Cura County exactly. area to get there. Um, so They're a lot closer in vicinity to Right, and, it, and it, as a result, it suffers from neglect. You know, yep. the Forest Service isn't managing it to the degree it ought to be managed. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the Park Service could do a better job of that. Uh, the, the other thing is, um, because there is no boundary that has actually been uh, designated, you know, in theory, the recreation area could disappear. Could in just, theory, yeah. In theory, I did read some right. of that. Yeah, they said it, it could disappear. But Highly so, unlikely. Yeah. But hey, man, we see all kinds of strange stuff going on right. with the uh, current administration, yeah. and you know who knows um, what what might happen. And so, building that Cure County is huge for, or building it into the Core Act is big um, to try and designate that so that we can properly manage it. Well, they know what's going on. There's over a million visitors a year yep. to Cura County alone, right? And that's basically Blue Mesa. People that are going fishing, people yep. that are going boating, people that are hunting and doing, you know, all kinds of different things in that area. Um, and, you know, a million people is not a small number. No, not at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty big deal. Um, so how have, the, how have they been managing it now? you know, without having a proper boundary or knowing how it, and this might be a question you're not necessarily sure of, but, you know, my first question is, well, if it's never been established, how is it being managed now, you know, and is yeah. there a big gray area there? It, there is a big gray area. And, you know, it, it's, as I said, you know, it has a, a park service superintendent. Um, generally it's, you know, corresponds with, uh, the, the Gunnison, uh, 
excuse me, Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. Um, you know, the, the management overlaps uh, the supervisor there. Um, but, you know, in terms of that management, it's, um, you know, it's shared between multiple agencies. So uh, I don't know, you know, in, in detail how they, you know, the division of labor there. It's an open-ended question, definitely. It's, it's, it's very much an open-ended <laughs> question. But, you know, it, it also speaks to the, the need for, you know, why there needs to be a point person yeah. um, to, to handle anything that might come up. Definitely. Um, and as we know, um, you know, water is a, is a major issue in Colorado. Uh, Blue Mesa Reservoir obviously is, you know, the largest reservoir in the state, the largest body of water in the state. Um, and, you know, the, the Colorado River Storage Project uh, has got a lot of um, nuances and um, issues that, you know. Yeah, and there's a lot right on, on that. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. The impact Cure County and impact Colorado Outdoor Recreation. Definitely. Um, so what's the plan for the boundary designation? You know, where, how are they going to start that? Um, well, I mean, they have an idea of where. Yeah, the core act it maps maps it all out, mm -hmm. um, and you can find that all online right. for the most part. Yep. Uh, um, yeah, Senator Bennett has put together a really great um, package that shows all the maps and shows you know some of the boundaries, um, but you know there's it it it's more or less follows existing you know boundaries with a little bit of expansion, like I said, up into Soap Creek area, a um, couple thousand acres that they like to bring in, yeah. you know, take away from the Forest Service and put in the National Park Service. And then I think there's another uh, 5,000 acres of, of BLM land that would sort of be absorbed. Gotcha. Um, but, you know, the also the, the other interesting piece of this is this uh, wildlife mitigation plan. And, you know, part of the deal um, is that when this place was established, you know, this the... the um, Mitigating for the for the fish and wildlife losses means that you know they were supposed to provide uh, habitat and access for anglers. You know th they created this massive reservoir and drowned the Gunnison River, yeah, the Upper Gunnison in, in in the valley there. And you know there was a lot of great fishing that was associated with that, and, uh, and still is um, upstream. But as a result, you know they were supposed to provide what got worked out to be about 26 miles of public fishing easements and were those tributaries or because i and I, yeah i've read a couple different things i saw 40 miles of river 26 of them were tributaries or something uh, yeah there's, and that, that could be off for sure there's a ton of information out there that it's hard it, it seems like talking to you a little bit over the phone and everything it seems like it's very hard to find all the info on this when it happened and numbers and exact numbers. Yeah, the the best documentation that I have is there's some historical record that, as I was told, originated from the Bureau of Reclamation. Um, it you know it it uh, catalogs exchanges between uh, Bureau of Reclamation, uh, Colorado, what used to be the Division of Wildlife, now Parks and Wildlife, mm -hmm. uh, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And you know there's some discrepancy because obviously. Uh, Cura County is much larger than you know 26 miles. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't mean to throw you off track there, but no, it's okay. So um, we're, we're owed. So some yeah, mileage. so whatever whatever that that mileage is, and again, you know, as I said, the unit began construction without a fish and wildlife plan. So whatever plan eventually evolved, you know, sort of happened somewhat organically. You know, back in the 60s. Mitigation was not a, a, a real um, popular thing. It wasn't thing something that you know that either Bureau of Reclamation was interested in or that people really knew that much about. But as noted, you know the authority of you know the Section Eight Public Law 485 and the Fish and Wildlife Coordination Act basically says, look, you guys have to make up for these losses, uh, both big game and and stream habitat. So, you know, interestingly enough, they managed to come up with about 10,300 acres of, you know, critical winter range um, for big game habitat. And that includes, you know, Cimarron State Wildlife Area, Gunnison State Wildlife Area, part of Billy Creek State Wildlife Area, um, you know, some 
pretty massive areas that were, you know, created and set aside for big game. They started down the path of the, you know, the fishing side. Somehow or another, they came up with the number 26 miles and basically, um, you know, started late and finished early. And they, they got about, um, you know, I think we came up with 14.5 miles um, that were set aside. And again, it's a, it's a, it's a curious mix of um, tributaries and, you know, properties um, that were acquired and some of the this was all supposed to be class one habitat or basically yeah i wanted to touch on that basically too, you know good fishing mm-hmm. um it's class one i mean it's it's tough to find i mean me looking it up as just you know a dumb fishing guide i'm trying to figure out some of this you know language and figure out what it is what i was reading about was class one and class two stream fishing yeah. um and class one basically was a unit of property that where fish could naturally reproduce and did not need stocking right right um, and then class two was Sometimes they can naturally reproduce, but it does need stocking um, or along those lines. It was, it was tough to find a yeah, well, you know, full definition of it. Um, corrob- corroborating as a dumb fishing guide, I can tell you that <laughs> uh, I don't think anybody's going to have much more success. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically what it amounts to. There's, there are other you know, stream class measurements that basically you know, factor in the width of a stream. Um, and I, I don't think that's what they're... Yeah. referencing here um, but basically yeah it's a place that will sustain you know naturally reproducing uh, populations yeah. of fish and you know as you know the Gunnison River although not formally designated is technically you know meets the metrics yeah. of, of gold, gold medal, medal yeah. water in Colorado which for those who don't know is you know the highest standard of fishing trout fishing in, in Colorado uh, 60 pounds of fish per acre yeah and I think it's like a dozen or more quality fish which are measured at 14 inches or more okay so not you know a, yeah a terribly difficult to achieve metric oh definitely um but of course you know uh, the gunnison has been doing it for years again another a story for another day that they haven't been designated gold yeah. medal there um <laughs> that, i'll have to write that one down yeah because that would be an interesting one but um so they came up with this number 14 ish but well, 26 miles okay and then 14 have been accounted for, um, you know, through a really, again, sort of abstract, um, you know, credit system, uh, where if it is considered a class two stream, they would give you uh, two miles, basically would count as one mile. So two to of one. Cla- yeah. Two to one. Class one uh, is one mile. Class two, you need two miles to, to make up the, the difference. Um, all that said, they can't, they've, you know, they've, they've come up with about 14.5 miles that have been documented. Um, so, we, you know, by our calculation, there's still 11 and a half miles remaining. Yeah. And, you know, that's a, that's a good chunk of water. Oh, okay. definitely. When's the last time you fished 11.5 miles, you know, outside of floating yeah. in a day? Yeah, You're exactly. Like, walk waiting 11 and a half miles is, is, you know. And not an insignificant piece of water. Yeah. And when's the last time that's happened in the state of Colorado? Like that you've heard of, you know, particularly in one of the premier, you know, fisheries yeah. in the West. So, you know, with this, where, where are they planning on, you know, where is this supposed to take place? Where is this fishing access supposed to come from? Well, for starters, the, the act does not um, require that to be determined. Okay. Uh, right when the legislation passes yeah. the, the idea is okay you have to the, the basically the interior, the, that the interior a, secretary yeah. has to come up with a plan within one year of enactment and you know um, I think if you talk to you know folks in the Gunnison uh, Valley you're going to find that there are um, opportunities that um, you know haven't been explored you know it's not like people are going to have a running list of uh, you know, ranches that are that are volunteering easements, or you know, yeah. you know real estate is a touchy touchy topic, and and, and people don't want to um, you know get into bidding wars and and things like this. But you know, there are folks that are you know working you know within the county and that know property owners that um, you know have opportunities to explore easements, and um, you know, there's the the plan is uh, again. 
allegedly evolving, but sort of at a, stem, a standstill. You know, yeah. they've, they've managed to come up with 14.5. So I think they could come up with another 11.5. Mm-hmm. I got you there. Um, I did read something kind of curious where I think you mentioned it um, in an article maybe a couple months ago, and who knows if I, I might not be quoting it right, but basically it talked about, you know, if, if when we d- when this passes or goes through, you know, they have up to a year, like you said, but there's no point in get- gaining any access downstream of that Aspinall unit. Yeah, and, and that's been one of the um, kind of, you know, curiosities of, of this act. Um, uh, Bureau of Reclamation, you know, and, and there are a lot of people around that, that can tell you that there was a time not that long ago that um, Bureau of Reclamation acknowledged that they still had this obligation. Suddenly, they have just done an about face, and they say, "Well, we feel like it's we've complete. done our duty. We've done yeah. our deal." And and my understanding is that they point to um, primarily to the Gunnison Gorge uh, conservation area down there, and they say, "You know, well, here's all this access." A not that accessible. Yeah, um, it's a long walk oh, into yeah. the Gunnison Gorge. Yeah. Um, B, um, you know, it it was already there. Yeah, you, know, you didn't you didn't inundate the Gunnison Gorge, right? And you inundated upstream of the Gunnison Gorge. Ergo, you know, any any new uh, access should compensate, you know, upstream of of the inundation. Definitely. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, you know, that said, I think. Um, you know, just kind of going back to your former question, talking about the class one and the and, yeah, and, and the access opportunities. You know, I think that you know one of the things we've talked about is you know there's habitat restoration potential. Um, everybody talks about Tamichi Creek and what you know could be done there and, and you know to restore the, the fishery there that has been you know beaten down over the years. Um, that's a great project. There's there are other areas, you know, Lake Fork of the Gunnison. Um, anything I think that comes in to Cura County, um, you know, is considered uh, upstream of Crystal Dam is is pretty much fair game. So you know, there's been discussion of boat ramps. Um, Bureau of Reclamation has talked to the Gunnison County Commissioners about uh, you know trying to do put some money into the uh, boat ramps around Almont. Um, and some of these other areas, um, you know, again, but they're they're trying to trade off and say, well, this this will nullify our yeah, our, you know, wipe the slate clean. And then, yeah, I have that written down, and you know, we talked about it a little bit over the phone, but you know, um, I mean, that's a big one for us too. You know, guides out there, you know, constantly putting boats in, taking boats out. The one thing that comes to mind, and I'm I'm sure you've seen it or been there, but the piece that Kier County owns is Riverway or McCabe's Lane is what it was formerly called. Right. Um, and it's one of the worst boat ramps in the county. Right. You know, and it's, they own that. Um, and so that was a question. And again, not sure if you can answer it, but is that an option to work on some of these ramps? I mean, that's one that Keir County owns. Right. Um, yeah. In, in my mind, it is. I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, I, I don't think in anybody's head, 50, Five years later, you know, there's a hard and fast answer to this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is something that, you know, has evolved organically, um, has just, you know, kind of fizzled out entirely. And we just like to see it made right. Yeah. Um, and, and I think we can come to terms, you know, on how to do that. You know, there's some money that could go into boat ramps and, you know, and access points, access, or, access yeah. points there, uh, easements, um, well, ha- habitat restoration, all those things. I mean, if you're already taking, you know, the two to one ratio and saying, mm-hmm. okay, here, here's, we figured this part out, we can figure out the rest. Yeah, exactly. And that, that is a little bit tougher, you know, trying to figure out those river miles to, you know, these access points or, you know, how's, how's that money going to transfer over to fixing a boat ramp or an access point or. I think at the end of the day, you know, and that, and that's what's written into the core act is that we just like to see a plan. You know, yeah. we'd like to see something that says this is actually going to resolve this issue in in a way that works for everyone you know well, you know i was thinking about it just now but uh, you know what would be a good way to you know as a community i guess in gunnison county to come up with ideas with you know if we if we're not guaranteed those miles or they're not going to you know we can't come to a conclusion on that how do we go about you know 
working on those access points or working on, um, you know, even just the areas around, you know, and supporting that habitat and everything. Um, does that have to, I mean, is that kind of a community thing to come together if, if this core act goes through or? Well, I think you do it the way, you know, most of these public lands uh, issues are, are worked out and you, and you pull together, you know, a group of stakeholders, you form a working group. Um, you know, actually, the Gunnison River is already, you know, engaged in that process just through, the, you know, the, the uh, Watershed Conservancy District, mm-hmm. you know, is entering phase two of the integrated water management plans and assessments. So, you know, the, the, uh, um, the state, you know, water rule basically is requiring, you know, all the drainages to do that. And phase two includes assessments of agriculture, municipal infrastructure, environmental and repairing co- conditions, and recreational needs on the Taylor, Cibola, Gunnison, Main Stem. So, you know, the plan would probably be an appropriate place to formalize the upper basin understanding of the obligation and um, have the BOR, you know, and, and identify recreational angling and, you know, class one, class two needs. Yeah. Um, you know, the Tamichi, uh, I think, is supposed to begin in uh, 2022. Um, could also benefit, you know, from the BOR mitigation plans. So, you know, I think th- that's the sort of established process, and um, you know, these things go on, you know, behind the scenes yeah. for a lot of folks. Um, but if you're paying attention, and you know, the guiding community, Trout Unlimited, you know, is, are great resources to find ways to get engaged and, and you know, figure out who's on those uh, stakeholder at, at those meetings. Yeah, I know, you know, Jesse's part of that. We talked about a little bit over the phone with TU. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I got a little flack for some people posting about the core act, you know, and people are going, well, you know, I don't understand it. I don't get it. You know, we already have our mileage. We're good. We don't need any help, nothing. Um, and, you know, my response was, you know, there's always room for an imp- improvement, you right. know, and making things the way they're supposed to be, what we were promised um, and what how it's supposed to be. Um, and a big one, you know, was trying to get some of these public access areas cleaned up or, um, you know, just managed a little better. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of people are definitely concerned about that too. Not necessarily where that, you know, those river miles, but more about the area within Kirikani as well. Um, and that's, you know, parking lots and all kinds of stuff. Um, cause there, we deal with that a lot being guides, as you know, I mean, just right. going around and hitting every area you can, and you know, the area very well, and different areas. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think in the future, you know, a lot of us guys would like, like to see, you know, a little bit better management of those areas. Well, yeah, I mean, and that's tough. The bot, well, the, the fact of the matter is, you know, um, lack of access is routinely cited as the number one reason for people getting out of hunting and fishing. You know, the places that they used to hunt are gone. They don't, they, they no longer have access. The places that they used to fish are either too crowded or, you know, gone private. And, you know, so creating access is going to benefit everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, management uh, improvements, you know, I, I get up in the morning and I look in the mirror and I, I, I see some <laughs> management improvements, potential, you know. <laughs> I got you. Maybe shed a few pounds, maybe need yeah. a haircut, maybe could use a shave once a week. Um, you know, these things are things that, yeah. that uh, you know, everybody's going to benefit from at the end of the day. And, you know, any, any opposition to this is really confusing to me um, because essentially you're siding with a random federal agency, you know, which, you know, everybody talked about big government and, and you know, their dislike for this. Yeah. And, and, uh, and going against, you know, the state of Colorado – uh, where you know, the governor and, and the, the head of the Division of Natural Resources have, have, have you know, signed off on this and talked about what a great uh, improvement it would be. You're going against Gunnison County, your you know, local control, who's hugely in favor of this. You're going against you know, uh, the angling community. You're going against you know, Trout Unlimited, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, the National Wildlife Federation, all these you know, people that we're supposed to be on the same side with. Yeah. Um, and saying, well, I don't think it should change. Yeah. doesn't make sense. Totally understand that. Um, you know, a big thing that was brought up in a lot of these articles that you find online is, is money. 
um, you know, where they go, even if we do come up with, you know, we've come up with this number, 14.5 this is what we think we owe you, but we don't have the money to do it. So even if something happens, you know, the money's not there. We can't help you out. Yeah. And that's a tough thing, too, to understand just reading some of these articles and reading, um, you know, what, even if everything goes according to plan, every, you know, it all passes, it all happens, there's, there's a money issue, obviously. Yeah, I mean, there's always a money issue, but I think the the word you used was tough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I got money issues. Christmas is coming. Yeah. You yeah. know, Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. Right. And uh, but you know, you you figure it out. You budget, yeah. and, and that's how it works. And again, you know, it would have been a lot cheaper for the Bureau of Reclamation to get this done back in the '70s when they were supposed to, um, but they didn't. And you know, the fact that they dropped the ball. It's not Gunnison County's problem. It's not Trout Unlimited's problem. Yeah. It's, you know, our problem is trying to fix it. Yeah. And, yeah, I remember there was a quote in there by you where he goes, I, you said, but I don't, you know, it's not our problem. It's your problem. you yeah. got to figure it out. Um, yeah. And, I, yeah, I totally agree with that, too. That's the job um, of these agencies. And that's, you know, and, again, we're not just, you know, looking at something arbitrarily. That You know, you can look at this and you can – Go back and, you know, talk about, you know, the public laws of the Colorado River Storage Project and the Fish and Wildlife Coordination Act and the obligation that clearly they've acknowledged um, exists because they've done acquisitions for 14.5 miles and 10,000 plus acres. They've, they've completed, they fulfilled the, the big game requirement, but for some reason, you know, fishing is secondary yeah. and, and they don't feel Seems like, like it they have to is. do it. <laughs> It does, um, and that's unfortunate because I've never really understood it. Um, I, I just, you know, it, we worry about that a little bit, you know, with other issues, you know, within Colorado Parks and Wildlife budgeting. You know, the Governor Paulus has uh, really been a great champion of Colorado, you know, wild, um, and you know, sort of brought that into his his uh, platform. But you know, he's talking about like the big grain, big game migration corridors. Um, which is a great thing. Um, but we get a little concerned that, you know, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul and you're taking yeah. away from, you know, aquatic resources to focus on big game habitat. Uh, when, as we know, you know, there are way more fishermen, way more people buying fishing licenses um, in the state of Colorado than there are hunters. Yeah. That's a big one. Um, and, yeah, for us, you know, it, it does feel like it's been put on the back burner you know, as fishermen. Um, and yeah, I mean, you touched on a lot of that. Um, so as for now, the, the progress of the core act, um, you know, where are we, where are we sitting now with this progress? Well, you know, it's interesting. The, the, the core act has made progress, um, uh, to the degree that it's actually passed through the U S house of representatives. Um, and it's waiting a hearing in the Senate. There was some pushback there even with the there, House, right? There was some pushback, yeah. Uh, you, you know, um, Scott Tipton is not a fan of the CORE Act. Um, he has, uh, and, and Scott Tipton, just for reference, uh, is the uh, third district um, representative, which includes a massive and... Um, really complicated um, western slice of Colorado that extends all the way around to Pueblo um, as well. But basically, most of the lands in the Core Act are, fall within District 3, Scott Titmus District. Um, Jonah Goose comes in District 2, and that's uh, the Continental Divide piece. So he kind of gets away with sponsoring the act mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as a, you know, a representative for District 2. Um, but because Curicanti and the San Juans uh, and Thompson Divide all fall within uh, Scott Tipton's district, he wants to have more say in the act. And, you know, he's had an opportunity, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, for over a decade in Thompson Divide. Uh, he's been engaged uh, with the San Juan piece. Uh, Curicanti, for some reason, you know, he just doesn't really... He doesn't. It sounded like he didn't like. He didn't like the language of it. But you kept. I kept reading a lot about that. You know that he wasn't quite sure of the language of it. Yeah. And he wanted to clear things up. Well, 
Yeah, that's one interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a lot, you know, in a lot of, and most of the articles I read, they talked about that. Um, yeah, you know, he's got some, uh, he, he's introduced a, um, a competing bill, or actually, he, I'm sorry, he's not introduced it. He's introduced a discussion draft uh, for review and held some um, uh, stakeholder meetings. And, um, you know, we had an opportunity to, to talk to him about it. Uh, he calls the REC Act. Um, and the Recreation Enhancement yes. Conservation Act. You got it. Uh, and the REC Act includes uh, Cura Conti, but it does not include the fishing access uh, piece. Uh, it includes uh, the San Juan Wilderness Act um, with a couple of different boundaries. Um, but And it also changes the, um, when, when you look at the Cura Conti piece, it changes the boundary a little bit up, up around Soap Creek. Uh, he wants to cut out a little over a thousand acres of what uh, Senator Bennett and the Goose would like to see. Um, reasoning behind that allegedly is that there might be some motorized use that that he, you know, his staff has heard some complaints about that, you know, that they feel like they're trying to they're going to lose access. They're, they're going to lose access. Um, and I'm not sure how the motorized use piece works up there, but uh, essentially they, they interpret it as you're trying to create a buffer to the West Elks wilderness um, that they don't think ought to be there. Gotcha. Um, and I don't know if that's a snowmobile access piece. Mm -hmm. or, I'm not sure on that either. You know, if you look at the Google Earth maps, there's some, the county road sort of just stops and then there's a dirt track maybe that goes up a ways that people were using quads mm -hmm. to access for hunting and fishing. I don't know. Again, those are the kinds of details, though, that, you know, rather than saying, well, we don't think, you know, this should be part of the park service, you know, it, you could probably factor that into a travel management plan, you know, and address it in a, in a different way. Definitely. Um, but, you know, it's been interesting in conversation with him about the, um, the fishing easement part and essentially, you know, depending on the day you sort of get a response of well you know we weren't aware of this or well the bureau of reclamation doesn't think that this this easement uh, uh property exists yeah or um we didn't receive the necessary feedback from the communities in the western slope and, well, yeah. yeah or i think we can work it out yeah, yeah. you know and, and again you know that's politics um it's frustrating but it's um you know, I, I hope I, I remain hopeful that we can work it out because I think at the end of the day, you know, this this particular piece is, you know, it's basically an administrative fix that says, look, paperwork never got signed. This needs to be done. And, you know, this is part of what we elect our elected yeah. officials to do. And it's kind of a no brainer. It's a no brainer. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really hurt anybody. Yeah. You know, what it does is it takes, uh, you know, some of the resources away from the Bureau of Reclamation. Um, you know, financial resources and says you, you have to, you know, make this work at no cost to, but at no cost community. to the taxpayers. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's already, you know, budgeted, Yeah, you know, that whatever their budget is, you know, that just went through and, um, in DC this week to keep the government open through Christmas. Right. <laughs> um, so what's the, you know, how do people feel about it going into the Senate here? Again, um, Depends on the day, yeah. I think. Um, you know, w we've been really working hard to get uh, Cory Gardner uh, engaged in this. And, you know, I know he's aware of it. And we've had conversations with his legislative director. We have had, you know, some signs that um, we're making progress. But, you know, he, he sits on the Energy and Natural Resources Committee in the Senate and, you know, chaired by uh, Murkowski from up there in Alaska he could easily make a request that yeah. says, you know, can we talk about the core act? Um, but he hasn't. Um, so we're trying to get people to, you know, help encourage him to do that. Yep. Um, there has been discussion of, um, you know, some additions, some amendments that, uh, Scott Tipton had introduced, uh, that were, um, rejected in the house Moving on, you know, he's had conversations, I'm told, with Senator Mikowski, uh, clearly with Senator Gardner, 
Um, and I think there's some wilderness study areas that they'd like to see withdrawn um, in uh, on the West Slope, basically taken off the books. And I don't know if that's just you know a bargaining chip that they're trying to trying to get done, or or if it's just a you know. It's interesting philosophical reading platform. about it. You know, when you I mean, I went through tons of different articles that have been written in the last couple of months or last week or whatever. You know, I posted one on our Instagram page and at, you posted it as well um, coming out of the, what was it, Grand Junction Sentinel about it. Um, and there's been a couple in the last days talking about it. And a lot of people are, you know, a little upset with Tipton's point of view on it. Yeah, I, I, a lot of people are upset, I think, you know, with Tipton's point of view on it. Um, you know, he... He's a little um, upset at the way, more than a little upset at the way that the act was introduced, um, basically saying that he didn't have any any warning of that this act was coming down the pike, and that you know the the folks across the aisle were not working with him. Uh, the sense that you get from the other side is, you know, we've been working on this stuff for over a decade, and we've you had time, yeah. you, you've had a lot of time yeah. to engage, and we've you know. And I don't, encourage I don't want, that. Don't want to harp on it too hard, but yeah, I just want to, you know, I mean, that's a big part of it. You know, if you if you go online, you know, for somebody who wants to look it up right now, and they go online, they're going to see a lot about the pushback from Tipton. Yeah, um, and so obviously that's a big thing, you know, for you guys at TU for the Core Act going into the Senate here. Um, you know, it didn't have. He wasn't backing it, being right. one of the representatives representatives for the Western Slope. Right. Um, and as a result, you know, it's, I think that's, that's uh, hamstrung the act in the Senate because so much of the land falls in his jurisdiction. Um, and, you know, we hear a lot about, you know, legislating beyond your jurisdiction. And, you know, it's, a, it's something that doesn't sit well with, with um, you know, folks in the West. Um, that said, you know, the REC Act includes a lot of overlap, and I think it actually, you know, while it does include some some uh, wilderness study area withdrawal, um, you know, that doesn't sit well with folks. It also introduces some potential wilderness in the Sangre de Cristos, uh, some of the, um, you know, Rio Grande cutthroat habitat mm -hmm. areas would be preserved. Uh, and there's a couple of good ideas in there. Um, and it seems like, you know, the two acts aren't that far apart that they can't be you know, combined That's what I was going to say, yeah. It seems like, you know, you'd want to come together, you know, and this is just my point of view on it, but you'd want to come together and go, yeah, let's put this all together. Let's make this all work. Let's work as a team and make this happen. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and that's a, one of the ongoing themes is that, you know, public lands bills, you know, specific to Colorado, you know, shouldn't become a, a partisan politics issue, a national issue that, you know, gets dragged down by partisanship. You know, this is something that most of the world, you know, in Colorado, most of the community can, can recognize as good. You know, there's, there are concessions made to the motorized community. Uh, motorized community maybe feels like they need a little bit more. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, nobody gets everything they want. You know, it's it compromise is, is what makes the world go around. Yeah. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think we can, we can figure out a way that everybody wins, um, whether that means, you know, combining the acts or amending, you know, appropriately. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what, what can we do right now? You know, as, I mean, it's the biggest as a community as, as a state of Colorado. Yeah. I mean, you got, I got my political hat on now and, and obviously <laughs> the biggest, the biggest challenge that we're up against right now is that, uh, president of the United States just got impeached. Um, so that's kind of sucking a lot of the oxygen out of the room. Yeah. Um, you know, when it comes to things like public lands legislation, probably not a, you know, uh, front burner issue. Um, but that said, uh, you know, life goes on and even on Capitol Hill, um, you know, I think the best thing that we can do is to just continue to reach out to uh, Representative Tipton uh, and Senator Gardner and, you know, make our wishes known, you know, uh, support the CORE Act, um, 
promote it on social media, you know, reach out, make a phone call, send a letter, um, do the things that, you know, the, the, the daily grind of government, um, that not everybody does on a regular basis, Yeah. but you know, it's your opportunity to get involved here as a citizen. Yeah. Um, and a fisherman. Definitely. Oh, I mean, and you know, this podcast is, it's not only about fishing and guiding, but it's about the, you know, the problems that we have within the community of that, um, and, and working on those problems. Um, have you guys reached out to backcountry hunters and anglers at all as to you or is backcountry hunters and anglers done anything? Yeah, um, we, we work quite a bit with, uh, BHA and, um, uh, you know, um, John Gale, who is, uh, you know, kind of manages their, uh, legislative efforts actually used to work at, at Trout Unlimited. Um, and, um, you know, they're very much on board, um, with the core act, with the Curicanti piece, um, been you know great group to work with i'm a member as well yep and uh um yeah are they stepping up and helping out and they are yeah um brian webster over in um uh, grand junction is has had a, a hand in this as well um you know obviously that's um you know he and i both live in uh, congressman tipton's district so you know we're working as hard as we can to to try and you know get meetings and try and you know convince these guys that you know this is this is for the good of uh you know western slope economy and and uh, outdoor recreation yeah you know people can't see where we are right now but you know um we're at a halfway meeting point we'd love to yeah. be over on the on the gunnison river <laughs> yep. but instead we're on the arkansas it's frozen river. right now it's all frozen <laughs> well it's, it's it's still beautiful it is it's um, gorgeous and there's always ice fishing. Yeah. But, uh, which is really hard with the flyer on. <laughs> it's almost not possible. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that said, the Arkansas is, you know, regularly recognized as the, we're, we're on the banks of the Arkansas River and, you know, regularly recognized as the most popular uh, fishery in the state of yeah. Colorado. Uh, accounts fully for a third of the gold medal water. Uh, we're, we're about a third of the way down that 102 mile segment of gold medal fishing. Um, but you know, we're in this little neighborhood called South Maine and in, in this beautiful building called the here, Surf yeah. Chateau. Yeah. And all of this is made possible because of outdoor recreation dollars, you know, and people supporting the outdoor rec economy, you know, whitewater rafting, fly fishing, um, you know, hiking, mountain biking, um, you know, and these are the things that make this place go around. And the reason that th this building is, is here and and this beautiful whitewater park that we're next to which includes some fantastic fishing holes that, that you can go in and wet a line any day of the year yeah um you know it's because colorado loves outdoor recreation and you know all these things in the core act benefit outdoor rec and you know they're going to benefit the west slope and you know places like gunnison are going to be enhanced as yeah. a result and it's not only you know we we talked about Kirkane for the most part, um, but you know, there's more to it. Um, but Kirkane, because I'm in the Gunnison Valley, you know, and um, this was a big part for me to talk about Kirkane and um, just clear some things up a little bit. And if if you have things that you want to clear up, um, I know you brought a lot of paperwork, um, to, you know, to go over. But I don't know if there's anything you want to touch base on. You know, we've we've covered kind of quite a bit here, but. Yeah, um, you know, I think Gunnison County is uh, is really just a critical piece of uh, the Core Act as a as a whole. I think it's probably the the single most impacted county uh, in uh, all of the Core Act, and uh, and you know, I think it speaks volumes that the Gunnison County Commissioners have signed resolutions of endorsement for this act. Um, not only for Kirk County, but for the Thompson Divide Withdrawal and Protection Act. And, you know, for those that are not f familiar with the Thompson Divide, that too is a, is a, is a major component of uh, this legislation and, a, and an ongoing battle that's been happening for, like I said, over a decade. Um, you know, we know the North Fork Valley goes into Delta County as well, but, you know, it originates the North Fork in Gunnison County. And that little corner of the county over off Kevner Pass is, um, you know, it's just a, a vital piece of uh, habitat uh, for, for big game, for fish, for wildlife in general, for clean water. And, uh, you know, it's also 
a place that they've been, you know, fighting over for um, oil and gas um, drilling and development for for decades. Um, as a result, you know, there were some uh, illegally issued leases that have subsequently been um, re removed, and there's, uh, you know, rather than see this happen again and, and people recognize the value of that area and, you know, the organic farming and the, um, uh, what are they calling it, um, agritourism oh, okay. economy yeah. over there, <laughs> um, you know, um, they want to preserve that. And it, it's an area that has, you know, gone through the boom and bust cycles of uh, energy and, you know, is, is thriving and surviving, you know, based on outdoor recreation, agriculture, you know, organic farming, all the things that, you know, make the world great and Colorado what it is um, are now a big, big part of what's driving, uh, you know, that segment of Gunnison County as well as Delta County and on down. So, um, you know, the Thompson Divide piece is an important piece. I know it's really important to uh, the Gunnison County Commissioners, um, Curie County as well. Uh, all these things come together and it forms, you know, this sort of critical mass of you know, outdoor recreation and um, just conservation and habitat that that really uh, are required to, you know, sustain the lifestyles that, that, you know, we've all grown up knowing and loving yeah. and we want to pass on to our future generations. Definitely. Well, I mean, I've covered as much as I can go over. Um, you know, I can only go so far with some of this stuff and I can only speak to what I know and what I've read. Um, but I mean, I like I said, I appreciate you coming out and doing this and talking about it. Um, get a hold of representatives, you know, learn about the core act, um, do as much as you can. Um, you got more over there? You know, I'm trying to just kind of look through some of the notes yeah, um, about, um, you know, the history of um, Cura Conti. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like we've covered most of it okay um i mean i'm good i'm i'm good on that um you know i want to i want to try and get together more as this progresses um and you know hopefully get some other people on board we, you know we talked about having a county commissioner on board we talked about um you know another tu member we've talked about parks and wildlife members and um you know people throughout Colorado and so I definitely want to stay in touch and talk about that a little bit and try and do some more podcasts and inform people um, and just get the word out because I know we're going to have tons of questions about this um, hopefully you know right off the right. bat people in Colorado or out of Colorado um, about the core act and because there's a lot of people that travel from out of state too and come and fish this place and I mean Blue Mesa Reservoir it's a trophy fishery um, you know it, and to put it this way, we've talked about it on the podcast before, but, um, you know, Gunnison County holds most of the state records for trout um, and, you know, salmon and lake trout, brown trout, rainbow trout, kokanee salmon. You know, I mean, there's a lot going on in Gunnison County. So this is a, this is a big deal to um, to keep protecting it. It is a big deal. And, and um, you know, like everybody, you know, I, I'm. I always say I want to spend more time in Gunnison County and fishing the Gunnison River, uh, Blue Mesa as Come well. Come up and fish. Yeah, it's a, it's an amazing place. Um, you know, I love the kokanee salmon piece. I think that that's one that um, you know largely is overlooked, um, or at least not you know broadcast as yeah. widely as it as we, it could be. I did a podcast with Dan Brow, um, who's the head fish biologist over there in Gunnison County, and we talked about the kokanee a lot. Yeah. And, kind of the history of them um, and we actually a couple of my buddies we worked on a, a video project about the kokanee salmon it, nothing's released yet still working on it but yeah um, yeah it's, it's a great thing that happens over there I'd love to hear it um, you know one of the things that that struck me and you know when I, I did a story or two over there with the Denver Post um, you know just the the cycle of the salmon and and the nutrients that they introduce into the river um, you know really is probably the single largest reason why the rest of the river is such a great trout fishery you know between the eggs that the that the trout are poaching and the you know 
uh, decomposing, you know, fish and protein sources, and, yeah. you know, that stimulate uh, life cycles. You know, it's just, it's really an amazing thing. It is. I'd love to learn more about it. Um, you know, that's the, as journalists, that's the best, the, the coolest thing is that we get to, you know, meet and talk to people that yeah. know, that have all the answers. Even, yeah, you'll have to listen to that, that podcast. I can't remember, I think it's maybe, it was early on, episode six or seven, um, but there's two parts in there kind of about the life cycle of them. Um, and I'm sure for some of our listeners, I'll get a little flack talking about the salmon because there's some some issues over there that we haven't quite discussed on the podcast yet. But, well, yeah, I know. Uh, it, it, there's always like this, you know, lake trout salmon mm-hmm. battle that's going yeah. on that um, I find mostly entertaining um, because I just want to get into a fist fight. Um, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I'll just stay on the sidelines. Yeah. But, um, you know, one of the things that I do want to, Mention, yeah, we were talking about ways to help out, and you know, we talk a lot about Gunnison County. Uh, this piece also, you know, Cure County tucks into Montrose, Montrose County yeah. as well. And um, we're really interested, in, and we've, we've got great support out of Montrose County, you know, from um, uh, Ross Reels and Abel Reels and and uh, Scott Rods, and you know, great business support and people recognizing the, the value of the outdoor uh, economy. Um, but, you know, we're always looking for more, and, and that's a place where we could really, you know, use some help uh, organizing, helping people write letters to the editor, Definitely. Write, writing, uh, you know, letters to their congressman, um, Representative Tipton, uh, as well as uh, Senator Gardner. Um, so that's, that's an area that I, I think, you know, we'd like to – boost a little bit more and, and recognize that, you know, that this is not just a, a specific to Gunnison yeah, County. Exactly. Issue. Yeah. So, and I mean, all that water, you know, I mean, the Gunnison drains into the Colorado river, which, you know, I mean, there's Delta County, there's all kinds of different areas that the, it can affect. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. um, the Uncapagre river. Yeah, exactly. Uncapagre. I mean, all of that. Um, so yeah, as much support as it can get from everyone, um, as much needed. So, you know, and, and um, fly shops really matter too. Yeah. You know, get, getting getting the word out. You know, the guides are the front line to the fishing community. You know, and the uh, people that come up from the front range. You know, that may or may not have any knowledge of this this whole issue. You know, we we tend to recognize West Slope issues um, because you know there are fewer distractions. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a lot of folks, you know, we talk about the economy and the number of people that just come in as tourists and have no idea that, you know, what's at stake and, you know, the potential for improvement. Yeah. Um, so it's a great way to, you know. And yeah, I mean, yeah, you're completely right. You know, as guides, you know, um, yeah, we're on the front lines. We're, we're the first ones, you know, that need to be in support of a lot of these different things and learn more about it. You know, you don't necessarily have to support it right off the bat, but learn more about it. Be you know, educated on the subjects. Um, I was talking to Brian McVeigh, who's usually on the podcast with me here, um, the other night about, you know, I think it was last year, two years ago now, we had a low water year, um, very low water year for Colorado. And, you know, we were kind of doing our own hoot owl restrictions, you know, as guides, or it was like, hey, look, you know, and we're telling clients, hey, we're, we got to be off the water by 1 p.m., you know, because yep. the water gets too warm. You know, these are our colleagues. We got to work with these fish. And, make sure we're there for them. And some people understood, some people didn't, you know, from out of state, they go, Oh, you know, screw that. We want to fish all day. And you're like, all right, we'll find somebody else, you know, cause right. that's not who we are. Um, yeah. and we need to protect those areas and, and be there. So, um, yeah, you're completely right about guides, guides being a big part of it. No, it's su- super valuable. Um, I just thought my third train of thought, unfortunately, <laughs> that's all right. Um, yeah, I mean, we can wrap it up here if, if you're good, if you don't have anything else. Um, and we'll touch base more on the subject. Well, actually, I, uh, the, the train's back on track. Uh, <laughs> I, I got, uh, you know, one of the things that, that, that you and I discussed prior to this podcast is um, the misinformation campaign. Yep. And for whatever reason, there's a lot of misinformation going on out there. And uh, I know that, you know, it's, it's popular to, to throw out the, the term fake news these days, but, um, you know, there's, there are facts and there's, you know, misinformation and, uh, you know, like looking at, for instance, um, Thompson divide, you know, it's a 200,000 acre, 
uh, mineral withdrawal. And all that means is, you know, there are existing leases up there that will be um, remain valid. Um, the valid existing leases will will remain, and and the people that you know uh, have put money into that can either develop those leases or they can uh, trade them for credits uh, and lease somewhere else. Um, but you know th the fact of the matter is it's not going to become a wilderness area. Um, although there are those that would have you believe we're trying to create a 200,000 acre yeah, wilderness area. Yeah, I read some of that. And it's not going to be a wilderness area. There are still, you know, uh, motorized uses up there. There's mountain biking up there. There's, you know, snowmobiling up there. There's all kinds of, you know, uh, yeah. multiple uses. Uh, and, and that's the definition, right, of, of the, you know, BLM and Forest Service um, land management, multiple use. And, you know, the, the gas and oil has already been developed up there. There are areas where it exists. Um, but, you know, all this is trying to say is no more. Yeah. Um, but it's not becoming a, a wilderness area. And in spite of, you know, what the Mesa County commissioners might have people believe, it's not true. Um, same holds true for a lot of the stuff out there. So it's important to get the facts and, you know, make sure that you're not just, you know, believing you know everything that comes down the pipe yeah um and it might be the article that you got um now i read another one last night i believe that was going over that where they're clearing up a lot of the misnomers that were out there you know or misconceptions you know hey, it's going to do this it's going to do that you know and i think it was again grand junction sentinel put it out um you know here's the facts here's what's happening this is what the bill or the act includes right anything else you know is not right this is what it is. A lot of that is focused on the Continental Divide piece as well. Yeah. You know, the, the high altitude aviation training. Uh, yeah, um, I read about you that. Know, there, there are a lot of people out there that are trying to say, oh, it's going to take away these training grounds. And, and in fact, my next door neighbor is, is a Black Hawk helicopter instructor at the hatch unit. And he tells me that, you know, they've been briefed on this, you know, for a couple of years. So somewhere it's coming down the line yeah. and and but if you actually look at the legislation if you if you if, if you go to his you know superiors in uh, the Department of Defense they recognize that there is no restriction you know that, that they have this grandfathered in and it's not going to change yeah um, so it's just I think important to, to validate sources and verify that you know what you're hearing is true before you start telling people yeah definitely well, again, you know, I mean, I appreciate it. Um, this, I think this hopefully clears up a fair amount for some people um, and they can understand a little bit more about what the CORE Act is looking to do and what we can do. Um, well, I appreciate you having me on. I know it's not the sexiest topic. Hey, that's um, all right. That, that, <laughs> you, uh, you know, although I did wear my fishnet hose. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you guys can't see that. But, yeah, uh, nobody can. I don't know if anybody <laughs> wants to, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, in the future, I'd like to do some more um, about this topic and bring some more people on and some different people. And so um, we'll touch base and, you know, keep in touch about it and see if there's anybody where we go. Yep, we need to talk to this guy. Let's have him on um, and try and figure out a meet time, you know, and instead of trying to plan it like we did, you know, it was like, oh, man, we need to get this day dialed. Can we do this day? Nope. Can we do yeah. that day? Um, yeah, I'd love to see it. Uh, so, I'd love to, to uh, take part in that. Um, yeah, I think there's there's great opportunities. and. Like I said, it's moving, you know, fairly slowly. Who knows what's going to happen in 2020 with the election, um, you know, and again, not a, not a top priority. But at the same time, you know, this is kind of the, um, the, the legislation, the little legislation that could. I mean, it yeah. just keeps on chugging. And um, people kind of keep writing it off and saying, oh, it's never going to pass the House. It's never going to get a vote. It's never going to, you know, Tipton's not on board. Um, Tipton could come around, you know, we could figure out ways to work together, uh, make some trade-offs and concessions. And, uh, you know, I, at the end of the day, I don't think, you know, it's insurmountable. It's, it's all been vetted. It's all been, you know, down the line for, for over a decade. And, you know, for, for anybody to say, you know, this can't happen, um, I, I have yet to see a, a valid reason for it. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Awesome. Well, we can wrap this up here. All right. um, so thanks again. Thanks, Cameron. Definitely. <laughs>